everybody, Carol here at Oak House Journals and I thought I would get on and show you part two of the um, little mini series that I'm doing on the origami self-locking letters um, for you to use as inclusions, uh, secret journaling spots, tuck spots in your journals. Um, this one is another super easy one to do, slightly few more folds than the last one but again super super easy. But you can make this one out of any size sheet of paper providing it's a rectangle. So I I have made one here out of thick designer, um, almost cardstock, and I've used a sheet of paper for this, 22 centimetres by 15 centimetres. So effectively a piece that size, because I'm going to work on this one and show you how it's done. And that will create um, this little envelope or letter, 8 centimetres by 10.5 centimetres. And that's another one that I've made in exactly the same size of paper, 22 centimetres by 15 as my starting piece of paper. This one I made slightly larger. This one was 16 centimetres by 25. And it gives me um, something that is 9 centimetres by 15 centimetres. And this one I made out of a standard A4 sheet of paper and that gives us um, an inclusion of 10 centimetres, sorry, 10.5 centimetres by 15 centimetres. So you can make these in whatever size you want and um, providing it's a rectangular piece of paper um, you'll get a really, really um, easy origami self-locking letter. So I'm just going to take this one and I'm just going to open it up and show you what it's like inside. So super easy, under there. And there's your piece of paper. The first thing I'm going to mention to you about this is if you noticed on these, probably not so much on this one, um, but there is a crease line going diagonally across the middle of the front of the envelope, but not on this one. And the reason being for that is the very first thing that you want to do is when you have your piece of paper is you want to find the centre of it on the long edge. Now, you don't really want to be doing a crease and folding that in half. Um, learn from me, if you do that, then you will get this crease going diagonally across the front of your envelope. It's not the end of the world by any means, but if you don't want that crease, and um, I think it gives a better look not to have that diagonal line like I've got on this one, um, then the trick for doing that is you just get your ruler and you put it on the center mark that you made. Now I've made one already on this sheet of vintage ledger paper. So I've done a mark, here we go, there we are. I've done a mark at the top there and I've also done a mark at the bottom for ease. So all you need to do to stop getting that diagonal crease is just put your ruler on your mark like so. There we go. You want to take your top right hand corner and you want to bring it down to this mark at the bottom. So you're taking that edge there down the side of your ruler. Now I'm having to be a little bit ginger or careful because this is ledger paper, vintage ledger paper, and it is slightly delicate so I'm just finger creasing for now everybody even though I have got my bone folder out so once you've done that just move your ruler over to the other side of your mark and this time you're taking your bottom left hand corner down towards this mark center mark at the top of your piece of paper. So effectively all you're doing is using your ruler to act as a guide so that you don't have a crease down the centre of or diagonally across the front of your envelope. So there we go, I've got my pieces in place there. 
So there we go. When you've done your fold or your two folds, it should look like that. And they should just butt up together down the center of your piece of paper. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a fold in this piece here. So if I hold that up again, we're going to create a fold in this piece here. So all you're doing is taking this edge and you're meeting up with the bottom of this edge here. So again, just take your bottom edge and just crease it up to meet that other edge. And crease it either with your finger or your bone, for, bone folder. <laughs> And you will find that it should give you a nice straight edge here. So let me just open that out quickly. You can see that all I've done is I've folded that up to meet this bottom edge here. Okay, so I'm just gently going to give that a little burnish with my bone folder now. Okay, so now we're going to do exactly the same thing with this little portion that we've got up here. And we're going to fold that edge to meet this edge here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn it round towards me to make it a little bit easier to see what I'm doing. So your piece of paper should look like that. So you've got a, a flap here or a fold here, you've got a fold here and two folds here. Okay. I'm just folding it all back down. Now for this next bit, what I like to do is just turn it round so that it's like that. So what you're going to do now is you're going to take this corner down here and you're going to fold it up to meet this edge here. So again, you're making a fold along this line. So this is the corner that you want to take up to this edge and you want to line up this little portion here, this straight portion, to that edge. And you'll see it's really quite simple to do. So I'm just folding it up, matching up those points on that straight little straight edge and creating a fold. Okay, so let me hold that up for you. So all I've done is I've taken this straight edge up to this straight edge and folded it across. And again, you have a fold line, which would be um, your center point on your piece of paper. OK, so now that's what it looks like. So now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to swivel it round again so that I have this point at the bottom. Now, very quickly, before we do anything and make our next fold, what you need to do is, this is the piece you've just folded over, and this is the flap that's just below it. So what you do is just lift this piece up, pop it down, and close that flap over the top of it. So now what we do is, we do exactly the same as we did with this piece. We take this portion along here, and we line it up here and this time we've got a very handy little section where we can see where it needs to go here. So I'm just going to do that now. I'm taking it across to that point, matching my ends up and just making my, my crease like so. Okay. So I've just taken that portion here across to that point, made my fold, and now all I need to do is just lift it up and slot it underneath that little flap that's there. And it's all nicely locked and folded. And there you have it, as easy as that. Depending on how you put these in your journal, um, you can create additional tuck spots. Um, if you only glue three sides, you can make additional tuck spot there, 
or additional tuck spot there you've got plenty of um, little pockets where you can tuck in inclusions and you can you can pop in an inclusion all the way along here if you wanted to I haven't got one handy at the moment true to form um, but you really could pop something in there quite easily and um, have a have a little tuck spot you could even pop it in your journal that way round and use it as your tuck spot so the world's your oyster with these of course you can decorate these any way you you want um, they would look nice with a little stamp and a postage mark in the top um, corner as as any um, envelope or postage envelope would have and a label you can collage on the top or you can just leave them um, plain if that's your fancy um, what I thought I would do with mine though is I thought I would take one of these and I would just have a play with one of my new Craspear wax stamp seals um, and just put a wax seal on the back of my envelope so I'm going to get on and do that and I'll show you what it looks like at the end Okay, everybody I'm all set to go I've got my um, base and or my handle and my wax stamp here and I'm going to use this new one that I've got from um, craft beer of a jellyfish I've not used this one before and actually it's quite a big stamp um, so this is probably the largest I've got in my um, stash or my wax seal collection um, so what I've done is I've put six of the wax granules these things I put six of these um, they're more like pellets really aren't they into my little melting pot and I'm just going to give it a little bit of a stir to make sure that everything is melted thoroughly um, this little tool is invaluable I got this from craft beer as well it's just a little stirrer as you can see um, with a little um, glass faceted bead on the end but not only is it good for ensuring that everything is melted nicely, if you get any bubbles, if your wax gets a little bit too hot, you can break those bubbles. As you can see, I've, I've got a couple on the top there. Um, so you can break those bubbles um, by using the stirrer. Now, what I've done is I've put a couple of little dots on my piece of paper here, just so that I can get an idea of where I need to my wax to be placed because as I say this is quite a big a big seal this one so I'm hoping I've not used this one before so I'm kind of hoping that I'm not going to make an absolute mess of it but let's give it a go anyway and see how we we get on so I'm just gonna put my seal down like so and yeah true to form I haven't got everything um, covered by the seal or all the wax covered by the seal but um, I'm not too bothered about that we'll see how it goes I've got a lot of seepage out to one side I'm not the best at doing wax seals um, by any means everybody but um, um, I think I'm getting to grips with doing the circular ones and the oval ones but um, obviously I've not had a play with a rectangular one before and certainly not one as big as this so um, apologies if it's um, if it's not going to turn out too well and I'm just going to let that sit for a little second or two let's see if it's ready to come up yep I think it is Let's see. yeah here we go let's oh wow I'm thrilled with that oh look at that impression I love these stamps I have to say I really do they've got such a weight to them that they give you such um, definition when you stamp them yeah I've got a lot of seepage off the side here and it's by no means is it a perfect um, seal but I'm not too bothered with that actually if I was I could let this dry and then try chopping some away um, but I'm okay with that really for a first attempt I'm more than okay so there we go everybody, I hope you enjoyed seeing um, how I did this particular um, self-locking letter and I've got another two that I can show you 
in this little mini-series. So I hope you'll be along to watch the next video. Take care everybody. Bye-bye.